Well, it's for the love of the hunt. Adventure is my calling. So I get up off my ass and go in search of the past. Oh, many roads and trails I travel. Never leave no stone unturned. Finding new treasures that always make me smile. I love to share my finds and some of my time with each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey right, folks, back with you. Now we're going to do a little bit of automotive here. Uh, I bring a lot of uh, pieces that I, I think can be uh, used in an orna ornamental fashion or just for display, you know, in different manners. So uh, let's get at it. Now this piece first up is all copper. Got a T and an N. T and an N embossed on it. All fully copper. I just, well, I cleaned a patch off. But anyway, uh, originally upon finding this, I thought it was, uh, you know, almost like one of those floats for the back of a toilet. But now, I believe this is a, a brake booster for a car. And you can see the one line coming in there. But still unsure about that. Maybe someone out there will have an idea. Just a round canister, hollow inside. Oh, well, that's that piece. Uh, next, we've got an old car door handle here, chrome. I just use this, incorporate this into metal art or a lot of different uh, art projects for display. Uh, here's a car headlight bezel. Once again, nice decorative and ornamental piece that can be uh, upcycled and changed into something else. Um, next up, we've got a couple chrome pieces here. Uh, looking at them in profile here, I think it's going to make a real cool Viking helmet. Uh, these being the, the wings on the side of the helmet. Uh, I think it's going to turn out nice and I'll show that project when it's done. Uh, next we just got a couple hubcaps here. Old Chevy hubcap. Followed by an old Pontiac hubcap. Uh, these, this is not very old. This one probably 60s, 70s. And we got a few old Ontario license plates here. One from 67 and another one we've got December 1968 yellow on the black Ontario once again and our oldest Ontario plate 1943 come out in really great shape okay so there's those we'll come back at you Okay, let's start off here. We got some uh, old cutlery here in different degrees of uh, restoration, of course. Uh, actually, I think I still have, I have some older uh, types of forks where it only has the three prongs on it. But you can see most of the coating is gone and the copper, copper base is coming through now as I'm cleaning it. Uh, a few little decorative spoons here. Some uh, are uh, silver plate, others aren't. And some, the uh, silver plate is diminished. I don't know if we can see. Yeah, some of them do have uh, silver plate markings on them. Others don't. Uh, it's a big tablespoon. Once again, same thing here. This is really crude, this one. Only been partially cleaned. Does have the maker on it. Uh, no, the camera will never focus on that. 
And just a little tiny, teeny tiny spoon here. So that's that's the cutlery, but I like to get, bring them home and clean them up and save some of them. Now here's a little later iron, which is electric. You can see the socket in there, the wooden handle. Still has to be restored as well. And next up, we have an old flashlight. The uh, reason I bring most of these home is just that in the past I've done a lot of metal art projects, whatever, and these come in handy for uh, incorporating into different figures or what have you, or just to have the metal as a material to use. Old Rayovac flashlight. Okay. And next, uh, we got an old brass, what I believe is a float, but perhaps someone else out there can tell me what exactly this is. Uh, that is plastic. Uh, I thought float for a toilet, but maybe it has another. It had another use. I mean, it's quite ornate uh, um, design on the bottom, and it's solid brass, but uh, the other piece is plastic. So, not too sure on that guy. And next, here's all the old light bulb with the little dimple on the top there. I haven't cleaned this up, but I'm going to clean it up and try and use it see whether it works or not. Sometimes they do. And next I've just got a few examples of old radio and TV tubes. A couple old chrome ones. Oh, that one come out of the base. The base is inside there. And these, I remember using these too back in the day, flash, uh, flash bulbs on a camera. <laughs> Here we go for that. A few examples of little light bulbs and tubes. Okay, put that over there. I'll come right back at you. Alright, we'll move into a few iron objects here. Starting off, old hammerhead. I bring a lot of stuff like this home, old files and whatever. Here's an old uh, nail puller. Uh, what is it? ET, ETF Limited, number 377. Uh, Ford Steel. Whoop! And that'd be out of St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Uh, a lot of this stuff I bring home too that's ornamental for out in a yard or shop or whatever. Got the big hook on it and the pulley. Pulley from off the track. Might have been even out of an old meat shop. Who knows? <laughs> and we got one example here of a sad iron. No marks on this guy, but anyway. Uh, next up, now this is a regular railway spike, and I was going to ask people the question of what these little guys would be used for, but uh, I think perhaps, I wonder if it would have been used in a mine for ore cars, like a smaller type of, of track or whatever, because they are just like a you know, an iron tie spike for the railway. Anyway, maybe someone else else out there will know or have a better idea than me. Ah, uh, next. Got a nice old axe head here to clean up. An early one. And, and a broad axe here. Same thing, needs a good clean. hole in it. Now with a lot of this iron stuff too that I'm showing, uh, as a rule I've been soaking it 
in uh, vinegar and salt or even say with some do electrolysis I know but uh, with me I've always been soaking them in uh, the vinegar and salt and what I'm what I found is that it permeates the metal so deeply it, it just breaks it right down it ruins it so now I've had much better luck with just sandblasting or uh, taking a wire brush you know on a on a bench grinder or a hand grinder and and polishing them up that way. So anyway, here's some ornamental feet, either from a stove or old bathtub. I believe these, both of these examples are from a stove, but they make, uh, they're easily incorporated into metal art and different uh, art projects. That's those. And next up, just got an example of some different type horseshoes. First up, we've got a big, big shoe off a workhorse here. Uh, I'll see if I can put my hand in here for comparison. Pretty big shoe. And then next, uh, here's one that's for a racehorse. And it's aluminum. No, excuse me, it's not aluminum, it's just light steel. Well, perhaps it is aluminum, it's really light. Anyway, I know this is a racehorse shoe. Uh, next, next up, we got a little different variety again. Medium sized shoe. And then next, here's a different type of shoe once again. Almost like a carriage or trotting horse or something, but totally different shape anyway all right that's the horseshoes next followed by not going to show too many of these but i do bring a lot of these home okay now i'm i'm going to uh, zoom out here so you can uh, see this hang on a second here okay there so what we have here is like an old uh, watering can or gas can and what I do is uh, clean these and restore them, even solder or, or uh, yeah, like they're they're all galvanized, eh? Containers, and I just re-bang them all out, re-solder them, and that. And uh, what I've seen is some people will either paint them or they'll get a, a clear decal, you know, and apply it, or even an image, and you can decoupage it and waterproof it. And they're really beautiful to, to have, well, either in a shop, man, man cave, whatever, or out in, the, out in the garden. I see a lot of people have them as a decorative thing. And then, last but not least, here's a big, here's a big gas can version. Probably a five gallon or whatever, but anyway, once again, it's the same thing. And uh, I do this with other items as well as the galvanized. I'll find uh, the old tin uh, siding or roofing and roofing tiles inside of a house. And they make beautiful uh, uh, backgrounds for framing uh, other relics in. And also to, uh, uh, yeah, for framing relics in or just in display or incorporating them into metal art. So anyway, that rounds that out for uh, the iron objects, and uh, maybe people can let me know uh, what they think about the uh, cleaning process or whatever, but I seem to be having much better luck just in uh, cleaning them with uh, a wire brush and, you know, going from there. So, okay, thanks a lot, folks. Take care for now. Come back at you soon.